Hello, my name is Mike Reed. I'm one of the orthopaedic surgeons here at Northumbria and we've been performing enhanced recovery or fast track surgery for joint replacement since 2008. Now over the years we've gained a lot of experience with fast track surgery and our length of stay have gradually reduced down so it's just now normally a few days and some of our patients are undergoing uh, hip or knee replacement as day cases. We've made this film to help patients understand about joint replacement surgery and what's going to happen to them before the operation and during and afterwards. She's a retired hospital night sister and no stranger to pain among her patients. But in retirement, Nina Pringle was suffering herself with pain in her leg, so acute at times that she could hardly walk. We were on holiday and we were standing waiting for a, a bus. And I s sat down and when the, when the bus came, I, we had to let it go because I couldn't walk. You know, I, could, I couldn't sort of put my, knee, uh, put my foot to the ground. So basically it was really unbearable and obviously I couldn't go on like that. Then Nina became one of the first NHS patients in England to undergo pioneering surgery performed by a team who specialise in fast-track knee and hip replacements. The operation was carried out at Hexham General Hospital, one of three hospitals in Northumbria which offers this service. What I want to do is, to do is tell you about the fast-track joint replacement system which some of you may have heard of. I think probably when we started we may have been amongst the first in England. I think there's certainly increasing interest now and there's quite a lot of units uh, interested and also I mean we've had several approaches from other hospitals to come and see our technique. Pop them onto here and then just tuck your leg in underneath. You feel alright? Yep. You feel well supported? Well supported. Okay. Since it developed the service in 2008, the team has operated on patients aged from their mid-30s to early 90s, though the majority are around 70 to 75 years old. And then operate the leg out and hands down. Well done. Very good. The Northumbria Healthcare NHS Foundation Trust, of which Hexham is a part, performs around a thousand fast-track knee replacement operations every year. This means patients can usually leave hospital within two days of their operation. We seem to be very pleased with the outcome so far. Patients are certainly very happy with it and they're getting away much, much quicker than they were, mainly because it just seems to be less of an insult to the patient to have the operation. They're just, um, it's less of a big deal. It's more like, um, uh, the, you know, the Scandinavians say it's like getting a, a, a tire changed or a brake part uh, changed. So it's, it's, it's less of a procedure. The Northumbria Trust is now admitting patients from well outside of its own area, one benefit of the new NHS that means people can choose where they're treated. When you attend a clinic and see your consultant um, and it's decided that you need a joint replacement, whether that be knee or hip, you'll then be invited to attend an education class and this occurs on all sites across the Trust. There you'll meet members of the team, physio, occupational therapist and nurse specialist and they will each teach you vital information regarding your surgery. Um, our aim is to try and alleviate any anxieties so that when you're admitted you're fully aware of what will happen to you and with you during those few days. All hip and knee replacement patients will be taught a wide range of exercises and these will be demonstrated to you at the education group. You'll be given an appropriate sequence to increase the range of movement at your new joint and then strengthening and functional exercises. The whole pathway is shared with hip and knee replacements and we used a lot of information from around the world on improving the pathway um, and that particularly was focused on hip replacement and on knee replacement and because there's so many shared aspects to it you know they've got um, the shared need for pre-op education and then the anaesthesia is very similar and the rehab is broadly similar um, we opted to bring it together so that we could get quite a robust 
system. We care very much about a person's well-being in general, so a healthy diet, reducing weight, um, stopping smoking if patients smoke, um, having dental treatment before they come in for their surgery, reducing alcohol intake, having a well-balanced nutritional diet which assists wound healing. All these things actually make patients more healthy and then hopefully their recovery will be speedier. Scientific evidence shows us that smoking has an increased chance of causing complications following surgery. In particular, the risk of wound healing problems or infection is six times higher. If you are a smoker, we will be asking you to stop smoking and we will follow how you are doing with a carbon monoxide monitoring of your breath. We can help smokers stop and we have numerous ways to make it easier. Please ask any of the team for a referral to the Stop Smoking services. Both hip and knee patients are screened for anemia because that can lead to complications after surgery and may require blood transfusion or longer hospital stays. If blood count is low, patients can be offered iron tablets or an iron drip as well as being given additional information. The patient receives a, an appointment to come to the pre-operative uh, clinic where they are seen by the pre-operative nurses. They go through a whole range of medical tests, they take blood, they do um, urine tests and they, they check on um, chest function and heart function and you name it, they do it. Um, that is so that um, everyone is completely sure that they are safe to go through the operation. I would then spend about half an hour with them talking through um, firstly their current function and how they are managing uh, with the difficulties they have with either their hip or their knee. The likely outcome of the operation, so their, their function immediately post-operatively, um, the fact that they're going to be using crutches or sticks, um, that they're going to be sore, they're going to be a bit stiff and what to expect in terms of function from them. I then talk with them about how we're going to um, enable them to function within their home circumstances uh, during that recovery time. And then you have a walk-in shower. Does it have a small lip or not? If the patient has any problems that we discover during the pre-assessment, it could be um, a heart murmur that's never been diagnosed. Um, the operation would not necessarily be postponed, um, but in between having the pre-assessment and coming for the surgery, they would maybe have an echocardiogram that I would arrange for them. Um, they could come and have that done, have it reviewed by the anaesthetist, and providing everything was okay, then they can still come and have their operation. Patients coming to pre-assessment clinic, um, we'd like them to bring a list of all the medicines that they currently take. Um, and that way we can look at any medicines which we may need to stop um, to um, avoid any complications in the operation. Just, so it's just paracetamol? Yeah. Okay. Um, we also ask if there's any herbal remedies to take, just so we can take note of them, and anything to buy regularly from the pharmacy. And then we can offer advice on which ones need to be stopped and for how long. People must try and avoid certain things before coming for surgery, possibly about three weeks before, not to do gardening. Um, that's mainly in case they get scratches on the legs, um, which may introduce infection. And also, um, shaving legs is um, another thing that can introduce in infections as well um, if they nick themselves, so it's important not to, uh, not to shave the legs within three weeks of surgery. We provide them with Octenosan body wash, which is just the same use as shower gel. It's an antimicrobial agent and it reduces bacteria on the skin. We ask patients to wash with this before they come in for their surgery. Patients come to us um, on the day of admission. Um, so if you're going to theatre in the morning, they will arrive around about seven o'clock in the morning. If you are going to theatre in the afternoon, it would be about 11 o'clock in the morning. So they've already been pre-assessed. So they know what they're expecting, they're starved, they're prepared for theatre. Um, when they arrive on the ward, they are met by the anaesthetist, the consultant, the nurse practitioner, the nursing staff, the physiotherapists, and we all go through our individual assessments to prepare the patient for theatre. We will um, assist the patients into an operation gown and we will warm them pre-operatively so all patients go underneath an electric blanket and they will be pre-warmed for approximately an hour, an hour and a half before they go to theatre. 
so that their temperature as, is at an optimum level and that's all to reduce the risk of infection. Mr Black, um, Dr Homer, one of the anaesthetic doctors, just a quick check for your operation. I've had a good look at your notes, so I know you've had anaesthetic in the past. So we'll come and see them first thing in the morning and review their medical history uh, and from that decide the best anaesthetic uh, for the procedure. The vast majority of, uh, of patients will have a, a spinal anaesthetic. This uh, a spinal anaesthetic is, is a, a process where local anaesthetic is injected into the fluid in the back that surrounds the nerves that supply the legs and the tummy. And that local anaesthetic uh, numbs those nerves so, so the legs, the sensation of pain from the legs has gone uh, and actual strength in the legs has gone so your legs go numb and, and heavy. Uh, and by doing that we could quite easily do the whole procedure without anything else extra. Left, yes. total knee replacement. Yes. Good, as long as you're expecting that then so are we. <laughs> the only other thing I need to do then is just to draw an arrow on your leg. Yep. <laughs> Good. TKR stands for total knee replacement, AWMI initials. The theatre staff will come to collect the patient and take them round to theatre and the patients are given a choice whether they're able to walk, whether they um, go around in a wheelchair or whether they're pushed around in the bed. Scientific evidence tells us that listening to music during and after surgery can help to reduce both pain and the use of painkillers after your operation. It also reduces overall anxiety and improves the overall experience. These effects can still work even when you're sedated or if you're having a general anaesthetic. When you arrive in theatre, you will be asked if you would like to listen to some music during your operation. If you have your own device, such as an iPod, we encourage you to bring it into theatre. If you don't want to bring your own, then we have music devices in theatre and we almost always have the music you want. We would also encourage you to continue listening to music regularly once you're back on the ward, using either your own device or the free hospital radio. We started Fast Track Knee Replacement in 2008 and we've now uh, treated about a thousand patients a year. So we've got quite a lot of experience now um, of people going through that process. It's something that we've um, developed and refined along the way and I think we're quite proud of and certainly um, quite a lot of uh, trust around the country come and see how we do it. So the operation itself is completely standard and um, the, the, the special bit, if you like, is the, the prehabilitation, so preparing people for surgery and after surgery. So routinely we would expect people to be up and walking on the day of operation and, um, and then generally they'd be getting away home the day after the operation or perhaps a day or two later. The process runs very much smoother if patients work with us as opposed to being, to being um, passive in the, um, in the treatment. He's been struggling significantly with knee pain for quite a long time and he's been quite disabled by it. And this is our x-rays here. Today we're going to do a left knee replacement and you can see here that the arthritis has produced extra bone which will be limiting her movement. The theatre you'll see has got a special canopy in it which reduces the bacteria by about 30 times. All the staff then will be getting in, into spacesuits, the people that are critically involved in the operation, and the patient will be given antibiotics. We'll then be making sure that the ligaments are not too tight or too loose. We'll put the first of the injections in, and these are the injections that are critical for this technique. These are the ones that are allow her to hopefully get up later on and walk around and get good pain relief. We'll then implant the, the final prosthesis. Once they've the cement is set, we'll then put a final catheter in, which then floods the joint with local anaesthetic. Following that, we'll close the wound, we'll put some dressings on, and then I would expect her to go into recovery, and probably within a couple of hours, the main part of her legs will have woken up, and she'll feel a lot brighter, and she'll probably feel like getting up for a walk. So everything's gone fine? Right, are, you, okay. are you nice and warm? Yeah, hopefully I'm warm. Okay, Thank you. good. So the plan this afternoon is to get you up, right. get you walking about, yeah. 
and hopefully get you away tomorrow or next day. Right, okay, lovely. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you, everybody's been so lovely. All right. Thank you. The, the Trust's taken an awful lot of new initiatives forward to improve surgical site infections and nurses have had additional training. Um, the the theatres are cleaned with, with special cleaning agents in between cases to make sure that there wouldn't be any contamination, equipment sterilised um, appropriately in between cases. Um, the anaesthetic will take approximately two hours to wear off, um, could take longer in some patients. Um, once the anaesthetic's worn off and they have sensation of their legs and they can move their legs, they can feel their legs, um, we will aim to get the patient up as soon as possible. So that would either be with the physiotherapist or with the nursing staff, depending on what time of day it is. Now, we do audit this because our aim is to get all patients up on day zero, day zero being the day that they've had their operation. Um, our aim is to get them standing so that their feet are touching the floor, they're standing, they're taking a few steps on that day. Very good. I feel the chair with the back of your good leg. Well done. And that's it. That's it. Most of our patients will always start to get up and mobilise with a Zimmer frame first. This is very stable and easy to use. The sequence to walk with this is walking aid first then your operated leg, then your unoperated leg. As you progress, we'll show you how to do a step through pattern so you're putting one foot in front of the other again. When it's obvious that you're ready for this stage, we'll progress either onto crutches or sticks. Generally speaking, patients who've had a knee replacement will use elbow crutches, and those who've had a hip replacement will be able to use sticks provided we don't need to reduce the amount of weight going through the leg for any reason. Before we contemplate doing a stair assessment, we'll make sure that you are safe with either your crutches or your sticks and you're confident using them. When we go to stairs, there will always be two members of staff present for safety and we'll ask you which side your banister is on at home where possible so we can make it as, as, as lifelike as, as we can. So what would you put your pain score at now? Patients will be asked to score their pain. Um, we use a, you know, a traditional pain assessment tool, which is a, um, to get the patient to verbally rate their pain using a scale of nothing is no pain and 10 is the worst pain ever. And we would ask the patient to put a number on their pain and whatever number they give to the nurse, that will then guide the nurse to decide which analgesia is more suitable for that patient. Some of the common medicines you'll be started on will be painkillers. Um, if we can relieve as much pain as we can, it'll help you to mobilise more after surgery, it'll help you feel more comfortable. Um, in with that, um, you may feel nauseous after the operation, so we'll give you some anti-sickness tablets. You may develop constipation, so we can give you laxatives. For knee replacement patients, it was decided to use cryocuff, which is an ice pack. What we do, we apply this to your knee at regular intervals throughout the day. Um, the effect of the ice is to reduce pain and also inflammation, swelling around your knee, which will hopefully allow you to get up and walk more easily and more comfortably. You'll use it all the time that you're in hospital as an inpatient. When you go home, it's really up to you. You can use that as little or as much as you like. Patients often report that they're still using it six weeks on and find it very beneficial. The patient will be fit for discharge once all of their assessments are complete. So once the, um, the, the surgeon's happy with the progress, the nurse practitioners are happy with their progress, physiotherapist, occupational therapist. Um, on discharge, obviously the patient will have a wound. So that, that's the primary concern as to how they're going to manage with that. All patients have um, waterproof dressings on, which are called Jubilee dressings which are designed to stay on for two weeks. We would advise the patients to, to keep that dressing intact, not to touch the dressing at all when they go home. On discharge from the wards, all patients will be given a discharge book and the surgical helpline contact number. It is important that our patients know who to contact if they have any concerns or questions. The surgical helpline is available Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 3.30pm where you can speak with a surgical nurse. 
The Jubilee Aquacel wound dressing should remain in place for 10 to 14 days, depending on surgeon's instruction. If there is any concerns regarding your wound, you must contact the surgical helpline. If you have any questions either before your surgery or during your recovery, you can also contact the helpline. We will arrange for the district nurse to follow the patient up anyway, because all patients need to go home on anticoagulants, which are tins of power and injections. Now we will have encouraged the patient during the time they're in hospital to actually administer these injections themselves. If that's not possible or if that's something that they don't want to do, we would inquire whether there was a family member or a relative that was able to do that for them. We ask all patients on discharge if they can fill in this short questionnaire. It literally takes two minutes, it's six questions and it's just tick boxes so that we can get patient feedback and we have had some good results, some fantastic results. I don't need to worry about if I'm going anywhere. I used to worry thinking, oh, well, what if I can't, if my knee locks and I can't do this. Now it's great because it just doesn't lock now and it's just been very successful. During May 2009, the Hip and Knee Fast Track Operations Team won this trophy at the Northeast Health and Social Care Awards, and that was followed by other success. This for preventing infection in operating theatres, and this one also for combating infections. Northumbria is committed to improving outcomes from surgery within the Trust and other NHS hospitals. We may contact you about specific trials we are running comparing treatments so we can improve outcomes for people with your condition in the future. It is completely up to you if you wish to take part. Most of these don't involve any additional time spent at appointments. The NHS now funds operations based upon the quality of surgery and how patients feel about the results they have had. We are about to show you a clip about patient reported outcome measures, shortened to PROMS. This involves you completing a questionnaire about your symptoms before and after surgery. We will contact you separately about this, but if you are able to fill in the questionnaires, it helps secure funding for your local hospital. I think it's, it's crucial that staff understand what the patient needs are and you only get that understanding from listening to patients. Feedback for patient care is very important because negative or positive we can make changes to how their future care is affected. Patients need a voice because we want to learn from them how we can improve the quality of care that we offer. Patient reported outcome measures reflects the effectiveness of care and also the patient experience in relation to that care. PROMS is the first step, I think, um, of the NHS attempting to capture real quality of care for patients. Quality is everything to us, quality of care, and looking at how we can objectively measure that and how we act upon it is, is critical to us. I think the phone's been really good. Um, I think feedback is always, it, it, it's not kind of thing you can just stop and start. I think it needs to be, con you know, continuity, it needs to be happening all the time. Once patients know um, about quality of care, then patients will be able to decide where they're going to go for their treatment. The results of a problem will be made available for all, and patients will then be able to see from their, before their operation status, to then their post-operation status, how their quality of life has improved. But we haven't been so good in the past about getting the patient's perspective, the whole experience they get in the hospital. What's their experience been like before they come in, the communication they've had from the hospital, what they're expecting out of their operation, whether actually we've achieved what the operation was trying to achieve. Is their quality of life better? Have you become more mobile? Is, has your pain reduced? All those sorts of things we, we haven't systematically recorded in the past. It's important to know how good we are at treating patients. Although 
hip and knee replacement, for example, is a very successful operation and makes a massive difference to people's lives. We know that from the look on their faces and what they tell us when they come back. But it's good to be able to quantify that so we can tell what we're doing well and what we're doing badly and which areas of the patient journey we need to improve on so we can provide the best quality of care in the future. Yeah, and working on what the patients want rather than anything else because it's feedback from the patients is what it needs. Definitely uh, worthwhile what you're doing and to get as much feedback is helpful um, for the NHS to, uh, to react if you like. At its heart, patient-related outcome measure is about you as a patient, what your experience was like in having your operation, rehabilitation, pain therapy, whatever you're having. What will happen is you'll get a questionnaire before you come in from the operation um, and you'll fill out various things about what your quality of life is like before the operation, what the key things that you're facing in going in, in for the operation and, and scoring overall how you mark your overall level of well-being, how healthy do you feel before the operation. And then you come in, have your operation, hopefully you have a wonderful experience. Um, and then six months after the operation, once we've, uh, you've gone in, you'll have had follow-up care from physios, OTs, therapists, etc., as part of your rehabilitation, as well as your surgical procedure in theatres in the hospital. And then we'll, we'll ask you in a questionnaire six months later, what, what's changed? Have we achieved the benefits that we were trying to achieve? Yes, I think it's a good idea because it also gives the confidence to the patient and also the, whoever's doing the hip replacement or show anything that they can um, learn by it. The relationship between the doctor and patient is paramount. I think the continuity of care between doctor and patient is very important because patients have to learn to trust their surgeon. And certainly as a surgeon, I, I value the, pa the relationship, not just with my patients actually, but also with the relatives. If I'm treating children, the parents, oh, I'm very privileged with the work I do really. So I think for staff, it's very important when the staff get feedback, then they can make positive changes because not everybody has a positive experience in a hospital. So from feedback, it's a learning curve or, or a way that people can learn and make improvements for the future. Definitely a good idea. Uh, I think that the patient surveys that are going to be used to measure outcome in, in hospitals will be great for staff because actually what they'll see for the first time is some direct correlation between what they deliver and the satisfaction of patients. And again, that can be a great driver for change. And I'm delighted to see now that in the health service, real quality is going to be measured. There's no doubt that I think PROMS and actually having the patient fill in a questionnaire on all the surgical procedures that are carried out is actually a huge step forward for patients and for us as surgeons to know that what we're doing for patients is significantly beneficial. Uh, I have no doubt constantly measuring what we do will empower us in really identifying the tools of what I call quality improvements. In other words, go back, redesign, whether that's at the pathway of care or look at the technologies you might be using in making that care even better. Healthcare professionals work really hard to make sure that your treatment and care are as safe as possible and the ultimate responsibility for this lies entirely with them. Hospitals however are complex systems and things can still sometimes go wrong. That's why we're always looking to improve the things we already do. Recently we asked some patients, their relatives and some healthcare staff from the ward what kind of things you and your family can do to help the doctors and nurses in hospital to keep you safe? Here are a few of the things they suggested that you can do to help. Always keep a list of all the medicines you take at home to keep you safe in hospital.
we need to have an accurate and complete record of any tablets and other medicines that you take at home. Write down as much information as you can on your list so that we know what medications you take, why you take them, how much you take and when you take them. Remember to include any allergies that you might have and medicines that you buy yourself, like vitamins, cough syrups and herbal remedies. If you don't already have a list, use the one provided in your ThinkSafe logbook to get you started. Take your list of medicines with you when you go to hospital. Show your list to the member of staff admitting you and tell them about your medications so that they can confirm that your list matches their records. Knowing what medicines you take helps us to make sure that you continue to receive all your home medications during your stay in hospital. Are you currently on any medication, Mike? I am, yes, I have it on my thing save up. That's great. Find out about and follow hygiene recommendations for your ward. It is also important that your family and your visitors are aware of these recommendations too. Encourage them to think safe to help protect you from any possible infection. Do this by reminding them to clean their hands each time they come on the ward to see you and then again when they leave. Remind them not to sit on your bed too. These are important ways that you, your family and your visitors can help minimise your risk of infection. You can remind us to clean our hands too. If you think we may not have cleaned our hands, then think safe and tell us. Oh, right. could I just ask you to clean your hands first? Oh, of course, of course. Sorry, I know you've probably done it already, but I just feel safer knowing that. No problem at all. Better to be safe than sorry. Anyway, it's good that patients feel comfortable reminding us. Right. Protecting you from risk of infection is very important to us. It really is okay to remind us we won't be offended or upset with you. Your safety is our priority. If you are concerned or uncertain about what is happening to you, ask us about your care and treatment. Your questions are important to us and we're here to listen. Can I just ask you about what you said to me earlier? Yes, of course. What would you like to ask me about? Well, it's just, you know you said that I couldn't get the cast on my leg today. It's just the doctor told me this morning that I could get the cast on my leg today and, and now I don't know what's happening, I'm a bit confused. Um, could you tell me why I can't get the cast on my leg today? Right, I see. Sharing information by talking and listening to each other is an important part of making your care better and safer. Ask us about any new, unfamiliar or unexpected medications that you were given to take. Tell us if you think you have been given the wrong tablets, for example. I'm sorry. These don't look like the pills I normally get. Can you tell me what they're for, please? Yes, of course. We'd better check that for you. Thanks for pointing that out. Be back in a second with you. Okay, let's take a look at it this. It only scale. takes a minute to check your chart. Before your operation, confirm the correct surgical site with your surgeon. When you are having surgery, the surgeon will mark an arrow on the part of your body that is about to be operated on. So it's a, a left knee replacement for your dear Mr Brown, is that correct? That's right, this is a, the knee you need to mark, definitely. If this doesn't happen to you, ask us to confirm this with you before your operation. My pleasure. Sometimes it can be difficult for us to spot important changes in a patient's condition, so tell us if you begin to feel unwell or not quite yourself. Did you not tell one of the nurses how you feel? What about the doctor? Did you not mention it to him when he came around this morning? just didn't want to trouble him. Should I go and get one of the nurses for you? Patients often do not want to bother busy staff, but alerting us to changes in how well you feel will help us to keep you safe. Relatives can be especially good at noticing unusual and important change in patients. You and your family have a unique expertise. You know the patient better than anyone. So if you start to feel unwell, Think safe and yeah, tell us about you. it. He's a lot more sleepy than he was yesterday. In fact, yesterday he was a lot brighter. I'm just a bit concerned, really. Before you leave hospital, prepare yourself for discharge. This will help us to keep you safe in your own home. Well, yes, actually. I was wondering what happens when I get home. Well, a district nurse will contact you once you get home. Ask about what to expect following discharge. Who do I contact when I get home if I have any questions or problems? 
There's a list of all the relevant contacts right here in this logbook. Who you should contact if you have any concerns or need advice. Ask us to explain any new or unfamiliar medications that you were given to take home with you. Use the discharge checklist in your ThinkSafe logbook for ideas about other questions you might ask. These are some really helpful ways that patients, their relatives and healthcare staff can work together to help us to keep patients safe whilst in hospital. However, we know that it is not always easy for patients and relatives to ask questions. I've had some feedback over the last week and what I'm finding is that patients often think they're too busy to answer questions or that the questions they do have just aren't important enough to bother us about. I can understand why patients think that. Hospital is often a very busy place, but it isn't troubling us. We are here to listen. Oh, of course. But what I think is that patients are worried that the doctors and the nurses will think they're criticising them or complaining if they do ask a question, even think it rude or cheeky. No, none of us would ever be offended or upset by a question. But it is hard being a patient though. I mean, they can feel vulnerable or intimidated. But in truth, it's not criticising, it's helping. Yeah, definitely. And I think patients just sometimes want to know more about their care and what's happening to them. That's right. And I think it's important that patients and the families feel they can speak to us and tell us things that we may not know. Yeah, they know the patient better than anyone. Patients and relatives are experts too. Yeah, patients and relatives are experts, so we should all work together as experts to help keep our patients safe in hospital. Be a partner in your care. Patients, relatives and healthcare staff working together as experts to help improve the safety of patients in hospital. Think safe. Be safe.